For some people, especially in places where winter includes gloomy skies and snow, this time of year can be exceptionally difficult. Holiday cheer may be all around them, but their mood and energy get lower and lower. They suffer from the symptoms of seasonal affective disorder, or SAD. Actually, they're very similar to the symptoms of depression. So there will be the decrease in mood, so feeling sad, feeling blue, feeling down, certainly a decrease in energy. Dr. Nicholas Sporin is a clinical psychologist at the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center. Some of the more specific symptoms associated with this seasonal pattern of uh, mood disturbance are difficulty waking up in the morning, so tending to oversleep, sleeping more, having a craving for carbohydrates or just a general increase in appetite, which may lead to weight gain. There can also be a, an increased sensitivity to rejection and along with that, a withdrawal from friends, family, social activities, a decreased sex drive, and other things like that. Other more common symptoms that are, well, at least symptoms that are in common with other kinds of depression would be difficulty concentrating, completing tasks, and other things of that nature, sort of the more typical symptoms you might see in, in depressed individuals. You know, there's some symptoms, too, that you may not think are related to seasonal affective disorder, like your limbs could feel heavy. You know, that's kind of interesting, right? That you literally, as a part of this, that you could have, like your legs are moving through quicksand. That's Jim Laval, a clinical pharmacist and nutritionist and author of the books Your Blood Never Lies and Cracking the Metabolic Code. He says seasonal affective disorder is a function of getting less sun as the days get shorter. What happens is, is during winter months, when we're not getting as much sun exposure, literally your brain makes more of a certain chemical compound, what ends up happening is, is you don't have as much available serotonin. So when your serotonin's low, you're going to get more grumpy. You're going to notice yourself be more agitated. You also end up making more melatonin in this situation. So you end up being kind of tired when you wake up in the morning and you feel fatigued and lethargic through the day. And it really all has to do with the fact that when you're not getting enough sunlight, it alters the neurochemicals in your brain, serotonin being the principal one, and that causes a change in your mood. And as you'd expect, seasonal affective disorder is much worse in areas of the world where there's less sun. The prevalence rates are, it depends on what you consider to be uh, the actual condition, but for seasonal affective disorder itself, it ranges from between around 1% to around 9% in the U.S., and that depends actually how far away from the equator you are. In Florida, it's about 1.4% of people who develop seasonal affective disorder. In Alaska, it's actually 8.9%, and the higher latitudes have higher rates. So in Northern Europe and other places around the world where there's less light around this time of year. I moved from Cincinnati to California, and one of the striking things I noticed was that in general, people were happier in California. And it would be easy to say, oh, well, it's California. But, you know, hey, more traffic, more expensive to live. You wouldn't think necessarily that that's the case. But I'm telling you, I could see a huge difference in people in the winter between here and back in the Midwest where it gets very dark. The sun doesn't come out a lot during the winter months. Foran says seasonal affective disorder may have an evolutionary purpose. Our caveman ancestors had less food available in the winter, so it made sense to be less active. But now a downturn in a person's mood stands in stark contrast with the holiday cheer we're supposed to be feeling, even if it's not all due to sad. In my practice, I find that there's more or less an even split between people who are pleased that the holidays are coming around and those people that are quite upset and stressed out about the holidays coming around. You know, a lot of people visit their families and not everyone has a happy family life. Not everyone enjoys seeing their families. There's also the stress of putting on holiday get-togethers, having people over your house, and you may not, if you're the kind of person who's already depressed or anxious or stressed out for various reasons, this is another burden added on you. So it's really not uncommon for some folks to find this to be quite a difficult time of year. However, people who get the blues every fall, like clockwork, can do something about it. First, Laval says, get out into the sun whenever it's there. Open the drapes in your house. Block carbs in your diet with kidney bean extract. Consider a winter vacation to a sunny destination and cuddle a little more with the one you love. That sounds weird, but hugging stimulates your immune system as well as reduces 
feelings of anxiety and depression. It creates positive moods, you know, by creating different neurochemicals in your brain. So you get the feel-good neurochemicals when you hug and you cuddle. If that doesn't work, Foren says scientists have confirmed the effectiveness of several treatments for seasonal affective disorder. The most studied treatment for seasonal affective disorder is bright light therapy. So there's some evidence that people that are vulnerable to this get their sleep-wake cycles or circadian rhythms a bit offset during these times when it's darker during the morning and during the evenings. And some of that can be corrected by providing bright light in the morning and in the evening, and you can get a light box that will actually provide this light for you. And you use it for about 30 to 60 minutes, sometimes once a day, sometimes twice a day. And it's proven to be quite effective. And if that doesn't work either, seeing a therapist often does the trick. There was a study that just came out that suggests that a specific type of psychotherapy called cognitive behavioral therapy is actually as effective as the light box over the shorter term and more effective over the longer term at preventing relapse. It teaches you that the connection between how you think, what you do, so your behaviors and your cognitions, and how you feel. It uses those ideas to actually help you make some changes. Foran says people with seasonal affective disorder often isolate themselves, and that only makes the condition worse. Cognitive behavioral therapy can help people get out of what's really a self-fulfilling prophecy. These people might have thoughts around this time of year that, you know, we can imagine what they might be like. Oh no, it's dark again. I always get depressed around this time of year. Holidays are coming up. Everything's going to be terrible. I can't stand my family. This is just going to be the worst. I'm going to hide in my house. Well, those aren't very helpful. You know, that may or may not be accurate. There may be some thoughts that are relatively biased. There may be some thoughts that aren't quite right. And they have a large effect. They're very convincing when you're thinking those things. They make you want to stay inside and hide. What CBT does is actually teaches you to be a bit more objective about those kinds of thoughts. It actually provides you with some tools to evaluate and see if they actually make sense or if they might be a bit biased. Foran says it's a good idea to be proactive. Get out and do things, and that will fight your urge to stay home and hibernate. It's also likely to make the holidays a little happier for those who've never felt very merry before. You can find out more about all our guests on our website, radiohealthjournal.net. Our production directors are Sean Waldron and Nick Hofstra. I'm Nancy Benson. Medicare and their list of suppliers continue to change. So if you have diabetes, it may affect where you get your testing supplies. But rest assured that your number one doctor-recommended one-touch testing supplies are always covered by Medicare Part B at your local pharmacy and approved mail-order suppliers. Dr. Brian Levy, Chief Medical Officer at LifeScan, maker of one-touch products. Some mail-order suppliers may offer a limited selection of diabetes testing supplies. They may try to switch you to a different brand, saying your current products are no longer covered. That's just not true. You are entitled to continue using the products you know and trust and that have been recommended by your healthcare professional at no additional cost. Remember, you have a choice. Stay with a number one brand used by Medicare patients. For questions about coverage or where to get your one-touch testing supplies, call 1-866-621-6216 or visit www.onetouch.com slash Medicare. Medicare Part B is not a guarantee of coverage and payment, which may be subject to coinsurance, deductible, and patient eligibility requirements. New Year's may be nearly a month away, but you may have already started thinking about your New Year's resolutions. A lot of people want to lose weight, but a new survey shows that the second physical trait Americans are interested in improving is their smile. And that's a resolution you can keep. According to Dr. Chan Gibson, President-Elect of the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. With modern advances in dentistry, cosmetic procedures can address all of the problems that bother people most. Tooth color, crickiness, gaps in spaces, and missing teeth. Smile enhancement can have dramatic results on your overall appearance, and even the smallest improvement can boost your confidence, self-esteem, and make you want to smile more. More than half of Americans say the first trait they notice about someone is their smile. Find out how to make yours look great. Find an expert dentist who is a member of the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry by visiting YourSmileBecomesYou.com. That's YourSmileBecomesYou.com.